Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of July 14, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. And of course, it really is all about the eclipse. Early in the week, we do have an intense sky playing out. But before I dive into that, I do want to say that as we navigate later into the week, right around Thursday, is when we are going to get a respite. We are going to have a truly beautiful and inspired energy. And I actually see this as a reward moment, if you will. It's like this moment where we are restored to faith and feeling a sense of purpose and gratitude and just happiness. And so that is an image and a feeling and an energy and a hope and a faith that I hope that you will hold on to as we start this week, because for some people out there, perhaps more than others, it is a challenging sky. As we start the week, the sun is standing across the sky from Pluto. Now that in and of itself can be an energy where we feel as if there are uh, these very strong forces that seem to be coming from outside of us, exerting their will in a way that is encouraging us to change or to be honest or, in a way that also can feel uncomfortable. Now, this is energy that we're carrying in from last week when the sun stood across the sky from Saturn. It is going to be right around Monday or Tuesday that the crescendo, if you will, takes place, and that is the lunar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn. What makes this eclipse special is that it will be happening close in the sky with Saturn, Pluto and the South Node. Now this configuration will also be speaking in harmony with Neptune. That is actually incredibly encouraging because it tells me that we see what it is we can do to move ourselves in a more inspired direction. But when you look at the core energies themselves, um, all of these placements are connected with a feeling of fate, a feeling of sacrifice, um, a sense of karma as well. And all of these placements are connected to closure, closing karmic ties, ending karmic chapters, and knowing what it is that has served its karmic purpose in our lives. Now, there are times you can think about all the times in your life when something has ended and you've been really grateful. You've thought, oh, thank God that's over. And then there are times in life when it's harder to have that sense of gratitude. It's harder to find that place of surrender and acceptance. But the power here is to know that when it is that we trust our karma, when it is that we trust the universe and our unique journey towards greater love and greater wisdom, it makes it that much easier to go with the flow, to surrender to the process and to trust that as part of the mystery, whatever it is that is coming to a close now is ultimately part of moving you into alignment with a higher, more loving vision for your life. Now this becomes that much more the case because this is happening in the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn is an energy that has to do with our understanding of power and structure, achievement and success, and how it is that we uniquely define it for ourselves. It is this configuration this lunar eclipse. Now, ordinarily, a lunar eclipse is a full moon eclipse, and it's like that much more powerful. Like I like to think of it as like 20 to 30 times more powerful than your normal full moon. But then you add the intensity of the placements nearby, and we're going even more than that uh, when we look at how powerful this time is. And really, for some, it may even be very emotional as well. And regardless of what that is, what to me is especially um, exciting, really, is that where it is that we have accepted illusions in our life, well, that's where we're going to find ourselves having to look at things more honestly. Wherever it is that we have um, bought into a definition of success that was not coming from a truly honest and organic place within ourselves, well, that is where we are going to be asked to look at things with the courage it takes to change. Where it is that we have aligned with a pathway 
and it didn't come from a place where we truly thought this is what success was, but rather it was based on our own uh, lower desires, our desire for power over others, for example, our desire to feel powerful in the world because inside we don't feel powerful in and of ourselves. We don't recognize our innate power, the power that comes from recognizing your own divinity. There is a peace in that power that I think on some level we all yearn for. But for some people, it is alluring to turn away from that or to turn themselves off to that and instead want the approval of these externals, the approval of uh, others, the approval of uh, having a big bank account, the approval of so many different things, feeling like we have um, people who are answerable to us. But ultimately, these are all illusionary. The key really is, I think, is that to recognize the illusion for what it is. When it is that you recognize the illusion, you're able to play with it. You're able to take it for what it is. And so, of course, enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. If you feel like you uh, would love to have all the wonderful things that life has to offer in the physical realm or otherwise, um, yes, be open to it. That's wonderful. And wherever it is that you feel you want to align with that, especially if it comes from that recognition that it is not about these things that validate us, but ultimately these are just things that are part of the illusion that we can play with, then enjoy yourself. That's my philosophy. But it's when we get caught up in the illusion that that sense of the illusion being broken can feel that much more stark and can be that much more of an awakening. And that's the kind of energy we have here. Now, as I said, we have this beautiful, harmonious connection with Neptune that this configuration is making. And this to me says that we will be able to understand what action it is that we can take, not only to move ourselves in a more inspired direction, but also to understand the illusion for what it is, to keep it in perspective. We will be encouraged to take those steps that ultimately help us to make the most of this moment and have it be part of our journey towards greater love and greater wisdom. But in some way, all of us, in at least one area of life, are having to look at the fact that the illusions are no longer working. For some, this awakening, this personal realization might be deeply personal. It might be subtle on the surface. But for others, if it is that the universe really needs to get your attention, if it is that you really have not been paying attention or very wrapped up in an illusion, then yes, sometimes uh, the universe needs to be a little bit dramatic. Uh, in order for us to understand that, hey, there's a lesson here. But I think the key is to stay focused on our learning, to stay focused on our own lessons. It is when we make our lessons about other people and just keep the focus there that we actually disempower ourselves. We actually end up putting ourselves in a place where we lose sight of the deeper spiritual significance of all things playing out as part of the larger tapestry of life. Everything that is happening in our lives individually, everything that we are feeling is part of our unique journey towards our full embodiment of love and wisdom for ourselves and in the world. And love and wisdom, to embody that, is a place of peace, of being at peace. And I actually have been uh, thinking about this lately. I uh, just earlier today, I did a class uh, with Synchronicity University. Thank you to all the students who came, who caught it on the replay. Uh, it is always so meaningful to me. I absolutely love it, but also the journey that I take with the students. And so this particular class that we did was on forgiveness, uh, part two. So it was the second follow-up from the last session. And this is something that I actually have been contemplating lately. Uh, this idea that so much of our understanding of spiritual masters, of the people who embodied love and wisdom most fully, historical figures, uh, archetypal figures, so much of what their teachings revolved around had to do with forgiveness and how it is that forgiveness is intimately tied into love. Like you can't really know love unless you understand that a part of the journey of love 
is forgiveness. And so we see this again and again, these notions around forgiveness, around acceptance, around surrender are understood to be deeply spiritual principles. We can see this in the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of Buddha. And I think because there is this recognition that when we hold on to resentment, when we hold on to whatever we do out of pride or out of you know our own pain, it keeps us from the full embodiment of love and wisdom. It keeps us from peace, being at peace within ourselves, but also it keeps us from truly being useful to each other, to truly being in the world. And I think that this is also part of being caught up in the illusion. And that's what it means to get caught up in the illusion. When we make our peace about someone else, when it is that we get so wrapped up in what was done to us rather than considering where it is that we can be better, considering what it is that we can do and how it is that we can move ourselves towards being at greater peace for ourselves and for others as well. Now, I'm not saying anything about being passive, right? Of course, if you feel inspired to make changes in your life, that's amazing. You should do that. If you feel inspired to make changes in the world, to be a force of love in the world, however it is that you define it, that's amazing. I, I celebrate that. I commend that. But there is a way to approach the world, to approach each other from a place that comes not from our wounding, that place that comes not necessarily from someone else exerting their power and authority over us, but comes from a place of the power of love. Love is actually stronger. I think that's why love is something that is celebrated so much. Like when we think about uh, figures of fear or, or figures who uh, sort of propagate this understanding that embodies Saturn, that embodies Pluto, right? And propagates this understanding of unfairness, these figures that serve as icons for ultimately an energy within us. I think that we look at that with a certain macabre. We look at that with a certain fascination, but also a certain sadness as well. It can be interesting. It can be alluring to consider that, to contemplate that, and even sometimes to be in that space. But it is love that truly inspires people. It is love that we celebrate. It is love that makes people immortal in a way that fear and false forms of power just never have or never will. We think about the people, the spiritual leaders, the masters who have come before and the others who will come uh, again and again and again because ultimately these figures are icons that are us, right? They represent us, which is why we resonate with them. So much of what makes someone truly eternal and loved and celebrated is often about love, and their message of love and their embodiment of love. So now here we are, we're at a point in our own journeys, yes, but yes, culturally as well, we can consider how we may be at a point we're having this activation of these very powerful planets, Saturn and Pluto. We've got this lunar eclipse that is bringing a lot of emotion forward and a lot of emotion to the surface. And then we've got the South Node showing us what it is that we are leaving behind, whether you want to call it leaving, us, leaving behind us humanity, leaving behind in our own journeys, where it is that we are collectively feeling like we want to change, that we want to redefine what power is, redefine what it is that allows us or that we no longer want to allow to remove our peace, to remove our connection to love. I think that this is something that we as a collective right now are exploring. And I think that this is something in our own individual journeys and in at least one area of life, this could be showing up uh, as an invitation, asking you to contemplate a little bit more deeply where it is that perhaps you've gotten caught up in a certain illusion. Perhaps it is that we as people, it becomes easier to direct our sense of, of rightness or anger in a certain direction because the true root of what it is that has truly hurt us 
that is what is requiring our love and that is more difficult to look at where is that contrast taking place for you well this eclipse might show you that it might show you something about yourself that isn't easy to look at but we have venus standing across the sky from saturn under the light of the eclipse and to me this means that we can see that this is or that there is a path of love that we can choose there is this path that involves actually engaging gentleness and kindness for ourselves and for each other and that path may look difficult it may look hard but it is a choice and we can choose that and along with these contrasts that are happening within us we can see how we may be the ones who are really wanting to buy into that illusion even if it isn't serving us anymore but at the same time we are wanting to know that that contentment that deep inner peace that only love can bring and so whether it is collectively that we are seeing these two sides represented it is ultimately within us each within us all it is us as individuals that is trying to find this balance right now it's just that this eclipse is bringing that awareness very much to the surface and adding emotion to it as well now there is one thing i want to mention with this also and that is of course january 2020 i have been talking about this i will continue to talk about it i spoke about it as well in the decade ahead horoscope and i'm even thinking about the 2019 horoscope that i did as well you can see those overviews on my youtube channel but I talked about how in January 2020, we are going to have the conjunction of Pluto and Saturn. These two planets are not exact yet. They're not uh, conjunct just yet. But these two planets are going to meet in the sign of Capricorn exactly with precision in January. It is this lunar eclipse in a sense that is highlighting those very issues. The South Node here is ultimately helping us to understand what changes are afoot, what is happening underneath the surface, and what it is that we are seeing, we are understanding that we don't want to have part of our journey, individually and collectively as well. 2020 is the very beginning of a 500 year cycle that will redefine power. It will be the root of a new understanding of power in the world. And so the last time that this happened, it was the Protestant Reformation and the force that that became in creating the modern world today. And so that next type of power, the root of it, the iconic moments we are going to see in the early part of 2020, well, it is now that the rumblings are happening. And so my hope is, my sincere desire, sincere hope is that we choose to understand power as rooted in love. Love for ourselves, love for each other, a genuine love that brings us peace. And we participate in that. We choose that. If we want that, we can align with that. And that in turn can encourage other people to align with that as well. To ensure that we recognize not the illusion of what power is and think that that is going to lead the way, but rather to own an authentic power that comes from being at peace with ourselves, with each other, and being a force of love within our sphere of influence. Now, I actually think that this week we're going to see the love too. It is right around Thursday that we will have a supremely harmonious alignment between Venus and Neptune. This is so beautiful, so encouraging. It is an energy of compassion and unity and love and art and wisdom. I feel like this truly is going to be a peak moment for a lot of us where we have that challenge and that intensity of the lunar eclipse and that will give way to a sense of connection to wisdom and purpose and understanding. Now, collectively, I think that it can be art that changes the world under this energy. And it is going to be conversations around love that are going to dominate as well. 
you look at the signs that these planets are in and the strength of position that they have right now with Venus being in the sign of Cancer and with Neptune being in the sign of Pisces. Both of these planets are especially strong in these parts of the sky, in these signs. And so they're speaking with each other in supreme harmony. They're magnifying each other's energies that much more. I actually think the fact that Saturn is standing across the sky from Venus is really good because what it's saying is we're not just going to be up in the clouds and just being carried away or that it's just a moment that comes in and goes but there's going to be a real understanding and a true desire to ground inspiration so that it changes our lives in practical ways. It is this configuration that I think is going to be a beautiful respite, like an exhale, if you will, where for some it may last longer than it might for others, but for at least a moment, we'll be able to understand the wisdom that is playing out. We will glimpse that wisdom playing out and whatever it is that we may be feeling, we will know on a soul level that perhaps these lessons are worth it because they are moving us in a direction of greater love and greater wisdom. Now, what we also have happening as Mercury retrograde moves from the sign of Leo into the sign of Cancer right around Friday, this is the second of three activations of January's eclipse point. So if you think back at the very end of June, and I spoke about this in the weekly horoscope, we had the first of three activations set to take place over the course of this summer. And this is Mercury moving over the place where January's lunar eclipse took place. Now this is important for a few reasons. One is we're having a lunar eclipse now. We're having an activation of that lunar eclipse that took place back then. Eclipses, very karmic. So all of this ends up being magnified. This karmic sense of what is transpiring is being magnified for us that much more. But it is Mercury that is bringing awareness to what might have just been a feeling or what was transpiring in our life. Now we're bringing a sense of understanding and clarity. We're having conversations and connections around it. This energy is with us, as I said, over the course of the summer. The first time Mercury activated the eclipse point was in the last days of June. And then we're going to have one activation this week. And the next one will be in mid-August. So this is a very valuable occurrence to take place because ultimately it is inviting us to bring forward understanding, awareness, communications, and further insight into really two years of learning as we had eclipses taking place in the sign of Leo and in its opposite sign in the sign of Aquarius over the course of 2017 and 2018. It is now that some of what was just a possibility or some of our most important learning is going to feel as if it is coming together in powerful ways, coming together in a way that helps us to see things differently and helps us to make the most of what was then and bring it into our present reality to maximize the potentials and the blessings available to us. It is Mercury and Mercury retrograde, a key characteristic of this Mercury retrograde, no less, that is helping us to do just this. I've actually been fascinated by this Mercury retrograde season because it is this time that is asking us to look at uh, very Leo and Cancerian themes, which is essentially children, and families. This is something that as a collective we are talking about, we are defining and redefining. And it is where some of our more important conversations are taking place at this time. Now, again, that can be personally, that can be collectively. What does it mean to have a child? What does it mean for it to be your child? What does it mean to be a child in the world, a child in society, which children have power, which children don't have power, which children have a voice. And what does it say about family and foundations and country and identity? So this is part of the contemplation that we are having in our own individual journeys, but again, as a collective as well. I, for one, am noticing more conversations around the inner child as well. Uh, and so I think that that fits very well with the symbolism and with the explorations that we are having individually and collectively 
during this Mercury retrograde season. What I love about this week for us, well, there's so much here, but of course it's the eclipse. The eclipse is so powerful and it truly is a moment where we will get to see the depth of feeling, the depth of understanding, a depth of clarity even into ourselves and into each other. It is a time that is going to invite us to consider and to contemplate what power really is for us and to claim a more authentic source of power. And that source of the greatest power really has always been love. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Now, what uh, an incredible time it is. I thank every single one of my Synchronicity University students. Uh, the summer school session is still ongoing. You can still join us live or catch the replay. You can get the video downloads. Um, all of this is available to us now. This can be uh, a journey and is a journey that we are taking together as part of summer school. And it has been so meaningful to me, so thank you. So the classes we've already had are childhood in the astrology chart. Earlier today, we had uh, forgiveness, further thoughts on forgiveness. Next week, I believe next week, it is um, happiness and success. So that class is all about the part of fortune. Then we're going to have a class on the midheaven and then astrological magic and then uh, a bonus Q&A type of class. And so I hope that you can join us or again, catch the download uh, and be part of this amazing community that we are sharing together, an amazing learning experience that we are sharing together as well. And thank you. Thank you to the trust of my students. And of course, live events. I am going to be in Baltimore Labor Day weekend. I will also be part of a cruise event in January 2020 set to take place under the light of the Pluto and Saturn conjunction. And this is meant to be an experience that changes all of us who participate, uh, all of us who are involved. It takes us out of our comfort zone, helps us to learn about ourselves. Uh, there's spiritual seminars and events. There's astrology seminars. Uh, this event is taking place with many world-class, world-famous astrologers. So for more information and to join us on board, please have a look at the links below. And thank you. <laughs> I know that this video is posted a little bit late. Uh, I'm sure that there's more stuff that I should be saying. But basically, while I was doing the Synchronicity University class towards the end, like my voice just went out. And I was like, oh dear, okay, throat chakra. My throat chakra is asking for my love and my attention, uh, which does happen or has happened in the past. Uh, it always sucks. <laughs> but, uh, and then that meant that I had to rest. I just had to rest my voice. And so when I felt like, okay, yes, I feel like it's there, it's coming back, I decided to uh, make this video. And I'm really, really glad that I could and that I did. Um, you guys being here is part of what allows me to connect with purpose and has been such a saving grace to me many, many times over the uh, 10 and a half years that I have been on YouTube. And um, it really does mean so much to me. So thank you for your patience with my voice. Thank you for uh, allowing me a little extra time to get this video to you but I truly do appreciate it. And of course, for being here, for watching, uh, for being some part of celebrating love and wisdom in the world. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again. And it'll be a great week. Enjoy.